everybody, this is Song Without Words 2, Dale Robinson. Um, here's a little video resume. Uh, I was the music critic for the New Haven Register from 1999 through 2006. Here are a few of the articles that I wrote, some of the features and reviews. Um, <clears throat> what happened was, in the mid-2000s, they laid off all of our freelance art people, and then the recession hit and um, people like me no longer had anyone to review and I really enjoyed it. I uh, I got to meet some really really interesting people that's Aldo Paraso, uh, Yale cellist, head of the cellist, cello department, um, Mark O'Connor he uh, is a fabulous violinist, groundbreaking um, fusion of bluegrass and classical uh, I, I got to meet and review Emmanuel Axe um, great pianist. Um, there's this thing called the New Haven Festival of Arts and Ideas uh, every June. Recommend it highly. So acts from around the world would come. Um, music, theater. Uh, it was really fantastic. Um, this pianist, I really liked him. Our dog and Pratt. Uh, it was funny. I asked him how you know how he practiced each day. Did he play scales or chord progressions and he just looked at me and he said what are you talking about and I said you don't do you and he said no I just sit down and play and um, so when you're at that level that's that's what you end up saying and doing um, Yale School of Music was really the conduit for mu much of this stuff people traveling from New York to Boston music scene would stop in this is a review of Bobby McFerrin um, and Savion Glover that was incredible Kronos came through, but they had a poor performance. I had to give them a bad review. Um, so that you know, there were there was a lot to do, a lot of fun things. Um, one of them was uh, there was a rehearsal for Carmen, and it was fantastic. Uh, the photographer used this photograph of uh, Carmen in uh, street dress during the rehearsal, and <laughs> with my byline, and uh, my mother was like, "Dale, <laughs> what are you writing about?" Um, unfortunately, the dress rehearsal was better than the uh, performance was. She actually fell off a table, um, <laughs> tripping over her skirt. I felt so bad for her. Um, so, here's something. A couple that were about how to be a critic, you know. The uh, New Haven Symphony Orchestra spent thousands of dollars on this Music of the Spheres concert. <coughs> you know, the planets. Um, it was it was supposed to be the kickoff for the uh, for the season and it didn't go according to plan and I think in rehearsal they knew it wasn't going to they changed my seat in Woolsey Hall and I ended up sitting right next to the director of the symphony and the bank of New Haven the guy who had financed the whole thing who towered over me and uh, and I felt really pressured to do a good review but if you're a journalist um, you can't be dishonest. Here's something it says here. I wrote, um, it is the orchestra has trimmed staff and budget and moved its ticket office and Pops performances to the Schubert and shifted some symphony series events to Saturday nights. Pock, who's the conductor prelude talk at the Slifska Center before Thursday's event, was standing room only and fascinating. <laughs> Musicians, meanwhile, are aware that of the financial difficulties but play willingly and at the apex of their talents. But when someone projects an entire planet on the pipes of Woolsey Hall's Newbury Memorial Organ, it looks like a bowl of noodles. More on that later. I talk about, you know, the, the symphony, how it all went, but what was pr the problem was the light show. And there was the magic lantern show. Initially impressive but eventually distracting was the crimson and magenta wash of lights on the organ pipes and Woolsey's columns lit up in amber and gold. On the ho hall's oculus, which is painted with the sky, an image of the planet Mars was projected, but the image was hurt by pollution from the other lights. Then, for clarification, the word Mars. It was all very Martian. Venus, played lovingly by the orchestra, brought a cha change to greenish everywhere and the addition of an ambient liquid gel projection and then really big dancing bubbles projected on the organ and so on. This was not an edgy laser light show, although Saturn, projected, was most in focus. Classical music, especially heavily programmed classical music, does not need to be dumbed down like this. 
so unfortunately I had to give a bad review to that. <clears throat> but most of my stuff was in celebration. I love music, um, and it, it was just the most fun to do. My intent now is to transfer some of this to the internet um, through my vlogs. They are the blue screened uh, things you see <coughs> next to uh, this. This is number one. And um, I'm going to try to create an avatar and see how he would look at acts that are on the internet, on YouTube. Um, I've already spotted a couple I want to talk to you about, but I also want to just talk about life, what I've learned in music. Um, I'm an amateur musician. Um, how about I read you one more? This was something that was very strange. <clears throat> Arts Festival crowd really digs Ancient Echoes performance. Welcome to Archaeological Funk. Welcome to Ancient Echoes, the International Festival of Arts and Ideas Concert Sunday in Yale's Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library. It features the Carnix, a lip-read musical instrument that towers three feet above the player. The bell of the thing is an alloy sculpture of the head of a British wild boar, complete with cranial cavity, soft palate, and articulated tongue, and nasty red eyes. The works were avant-garde, using dazzling percussion by the young Joby Burgess, soprano by the daring Sarah Leonard, and trombone and carnix by John Kenny. Kenny helped with the reconstruction of the artifact, found in a Scottish peat bog where it was sacrificed around 2000 AD. Kenny has taken the carnix and run with it since forming Carnix and Company in the United Kingdom. There are already four CDs. Something about the surreal roar of the Carnix and the fractured vocals about deep, dark Celtic history turned on the elite crowd at the Beinecke. It couldn't have been the first piece, Kenny's The Voice of the Carnix, because as the moaning beast levitated from the stairwell joined by four others on tape, the effect was threatening and disturbing. No one likes to be threatened or disturbed, do they? The piece ends with the Carnix in full death gasp, thank goodness. Maybe they liked Javier Alvarez's new age Ki Bonagaku, marimba liquid and trombone muted, but the piece changed its mind toward the end, rendering itself confused. John Taverner's eclectic lamination, last prayer and exaltation, sung in Old Gaelic, Latin, and Russian, fascinated until the intentionally desifunato exaltation, which, eyes closed, sounded like shower singing while banging on a faucet. So far, not so good. The world premiere of Kenny's A Bird and a Hag, based on 6th century Gaelic poems and commissioned by the festival, was easier to appreciate. A nice soprano trombone call in response lifted The Bird and the Hag was full of regret. But poor Sarah Leonard, she had to sing, Now I am like a stinking hag after blowing across the top of a wine bottle. It could have been Judith Weir's kinky mini-opera, King Harold Saga, that the crowd liked, or the karaoke of the maracas in Temesacal by Alvarez. No, it had to be the Carnix, as in Throat, by John Purser, with its tongue-flapping vibrato and flatulent ancient echoey dynamic. It must be interesting to make art of archaeology, but this instrument was always depicted with warriors. Kenny said it is not known what music, if any, came from it, say, around the campfire. The Carnix, then, was a weapon. Run. Run for your life. So they gave me a lot of latitude um, at the New Haven Register to do these sort of things. Um, one gentleman that I'd like to uh, talk to you about in another video is uh, Kim Perling. I got to know him. He's a jazz pianist, um, born in Vietnam, and he was living the life. He was working between New York and Boston. Um, he was playing in shows. He was in Miss Saigon, the Broadway play, and the, when it came to the Oakdale. And um, he's a young musician that I'm going to reapproach, see what he's doing now, and uh, talk to you about. So I hope you enjoy my vlogs, and if you do have any questions, any comments, uh, please put them below.